have a special guest in yeah. studio. So excited to talk to our next guest because it is a great organization doing amazing work in different parts of the world. It is Veterinarians Without Borders. We're joined by Chris and Dr. Amy Lowe. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here. And of course, special guest Chevy that you've brought along here. Uh, Chris, let's talk about Chevy. First of all, why did you want to bring Chevy along to the show today? Well, Chevy is a, uh, a lovely goat. It's from the uh, Ottawa Valley. And we wanted to uh, bring uh, Chevy as an example of the kind of animals that uh, we work with around the world. So give us an overview of uh, Veterans Without Borders. You've been around since 2005. So mm -hmm. what's the mission and vision? Essentially, uh, Veterans Without Borders was founded on the principle of what we call the eco-health approach, which recognizes that the health of people, animals, and the environment are interlinked. So the health of animals affects the health of people and the environment. So what we try to do as an organization around the world and even in uh, parts of Canada is to work with local communities to address kind of the core issues that affect public health, generally uh, particularly related to uh, animals. So we work uh, with the communities and uh, farmers and other organizations uh, to train people on animal health care and welfare right. and disease prevention and control because there are a lot of uh, diseases prevalent that originate in animals, as you may know, that affect humans. And you've seen firsthand some of the experience you've traveled around the world. Yeah, so as a vet student, I was able to go to India with two other veterinary students. Um, we worked with an organization called Marwar Animal Protection Trust. So okay. we did rabies vaccination and sterilizations for dogs. Um, about 50 to 60,000 people die every year in India from rabies. It's mostly really? children under the age of 12. Wow. Um, and mainly due to dog bites. So it's, it's in the dog population, um, goes to humans through dog bites. So it's a really important organization to, to help with that. How well are you received when you when you go down and you start working with these local communities? Very well, yeah, because yeah. I mean a lot of there's there's really no access to animal health services there so we're going in and we're providing these services um, and they also do the organization I worked with um, does education in the schools on dog bite prevention so I was able to go to some of the elementary schools where they talk about dog bites they do puppet shows um, and oh, also cool. kind of cartoon <laughs> books to show the importance of, um, of being being safe around dogs and that right. kind of thing, so yeah. And how do you choose where you go in the world with your organization? Well, we like to work uh, primarily with uh, countries in need, where the resources to for animal care are limited, where the knowledge is limited, and where we can work with our Canadian volunteers and students like Amy to make a difference in providing them with the knowledge and taking care of their, their basic needs. So uh, you'll see that uh, we work in parts of Africa, and in Asia and tr on training on animal health and welfare and vaccination procedures, uh, disease prevention and control. And uh, so we really like to make sure we take care of their needs. Chris, what does the training in animal welfare look like? When you go down there, how are you training people? Well, we uh, do it in uh, different ways. Uh, we train them on administration of uh, basic vaccines. Okay. Uh, we help them deal with uh, basic injuries and how to treat those in Laos, for example. Uh, some livestock, uh, such as, uh, as, as Chevy here, in many countries they suffer from uh, diseases like injuries in the foot and so forth. So we help people uh, and train them in that prevention and, and that treatment, and also uh, in preventing the spread as well. So by taking right. care of the animal, then they prevent the spread to other animals. It's important to note that like 70% of diseases that affect humans now have their origin in animals. Yeah. It's a huge, like the SARS, the swine flu, right. uh, Ebola, the outbreak in Africa, all of these uh, diseases, and even rabies, with the one we're most uh, accustomed to and, and knowledgeable right. of that. Uh, it's very important. I wanted to let you know we have, yeah, uh, have Doritos. Yeah. Yeah, what, are, uh, what's with the Doritos? I was going to ask you. Well, Doritos, Chevy loves Doritos. Really? Oh. Absolutely. So you're welcome to try and uh, feed okay. uh, yeah, let's Chevy. Okay, let's feed Chevy. Is this part of his regular diet, Stephanie? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's these just are, a These treat. are floor diapers as a precaution. We oh, tried to I find see. large ones. But uh, big you never hips, know, big right? Hips, big hips couldn't fit. Oh, yes. 
Oh, Chevy loves those for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So Amy, has that experience going to India, has that helped you then, you know, when you came back here, ha has it helped you in your own career moving forward? Definitely, yeah. So I've done a lot of international projects since um, Vets Without Borders. And I've actually, I've been in private practice for about three years, but I've taken a bit of a hiatus to do okay. a master's in global health um, oh, at McMaster you. University. So nice. kind of really interlinking the human health with animal health side of things. So definitely Vets Without Borders <laughs> opened my eyes to what vets can do. You're not going Working fast enough, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, Chevy, hang on. It's a good thing we have a big bag, yeah. <laughs> So, Chris, how many people then are involved? How many volunteers do you have involved at the moment? Well, right now we have a new program called the uh, Volunteer Cooperation Program, okay. where we're recruiting primarily veterinarians but other public health professionals. And uh, they're going to be uh, deployed to uh, five uh, different countries over the next five years, and there will be a hundred of them. So, we'll be looking wow. for people with a variety of backgrounds, uh, such as uh, Amy's with uh, veterinary medical background, but also you know agricultural production in other areas. And all the volunteer opportunities are posted on their on our website, and okay. they include short-term placements of about uh, four weeks, <laughs> some two months, and beyond. Shelley, this is the most entertainment I've had in weeks. <laughs> yeah. Just watching you try to feed Chevy here. So are, are, are most of the volunteers from Canada or have you expanded outside of Canada? Any plans to do so? Well, we um, work primarily through, through Canadians okay. as part of our uh, arrangement with our, with our donors. Now, what about funding? Where does your funding come from? Our funding uh, comes from a variety of sources, primarily from the Government of Canada, okay. uh, Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Development. We also have some initiative with the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, which also deals with uh, animal health. We also uh, receive a generous donation from AMIA, which is based in Toronto, and provides us with uh, Aeroplan miles, oh, which really? the public, okay. is, public is also welcome to contribute to their unused miles, and that <laughs> enables our uh, volunteers and our students to go out to the field to do the great work that they do. So people can do private donations as well? Absolutely. We always encourage uh, right. donations uh, because ultimately uh, we rely on, on public support to continue the good work we do. Yeah, and we have a full screen page we can bring up just as we go to break here so that everybody at home, if you're looking to donate to a great cause, you can certainly do so. Thanks to all of you for coming. Thanks, Stephanie, for bringing along Chevy here yes. as well. Chevy, thanks, Chevy, wow, you eat those faster than my 16-year-old <laughs> stepson, and that is saying something. We'll be back with more daytime right after this. Don't go anywhere.